you know you gotta go down and subscribe. The broadcast you're about to hear is for your ears only. And nobody else's on the Joe Cronin Show. Join the JCS Army on Patreon today. with the long ones and only the ladies with the lovely wet ones exist. (laughs) What's up, chat? How you doing, you crazy bastards? Look into my eyes and say you'll die If I wanna end my life Look inside my eyes And tell me you lie I know that you fucked some girl I I wanna take drugs tonight I don't know, imagine if, uh... Imagine if like the eighties was all was like the rap that's out now where it's all about like drugs and stuff, like do a tablet of this and that. Everybody everybody's apparently everybody's on drugs in rap nowadays, you know what I mean? I mean that's what it sounds like. <laughs> What's up everybody? No for real though. That's how that's how wet it is, man. Sometimes it gets a little too wet and you gotta just call it out. You know, you gotta call it out for what it is. A big raptor. A big raptor of love. How's the chat doing? We are going to totally talk to the chat right now. We'll be live for the next 10 to 20 minutes. Maybe. Maybe longer. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And um, we will talk about whatever you whatever you want to talk about because this is Anything Goes. If it's AEW, if it's WWE, if it's wrestling news, if it's your life, If it's me, whatever. I am so close to recording episode 200, the rest of episode 200, that I am going to get done as soon as this uh, live stream ends. And it's going to go up on Patreon. So thanks to everybody who was dropping questions on Patreon. Lots of people were sending me messages and things like that. So, yeah. I mean, it's not the biggest deal because, you know, it's 200 of my own private. Or not private, but my own solo podcast, so whatever. But, you know, it's kind of cool. And it's kind of a big, big milestone, to be honest. It, it is. It really is. And so that's going to be fun. Oh, God. But, um, all right. Let's turn to the chat. Still celebrating a, what? Still celebrating uh, a national title. 
Louisiana today. Yeah, that was a runaway at the end. I mean, it's funny because I noticed my viewership climbed up. Did you guys notice that? My viewership went up. My viewership was down because people were watching that game. Um, so it wasn't WWE's viewership, clearly. Um, you know, normally when we start my show, you know, as soon as I start, we're at like 900 viewers pretty quickly. And then before you know it, we go over the 1,000 mark and sometimes another 1,200 mark and sometimes even further than that. But last night, we, we, we bumped around from the 800s to the 600s to the 800s. It was clear as day that there was at least like probably 500 to 1,000 people that normally chime in or show up at some point that didn't show up because they were watching that game. No doubt about that. So if you guys remember that, remember that. Because it was... Uh, it was a pretty significant thing for the ratings. You know? Would you ever do acid on stream? Wow. Uh, no, I wouldn't. I mean, we've had some people on the show do some weird things. I would not encourage that. Because you could do something fucked up, man, and then you're live on stream. You know what I mean? If You, you know what I mean? Like, you do something fucking crazy. And you're like live on your stream, like that could be fucking dangerous. It could be weird, you know. You could end up like it scared me one time. Um, that happened with one of my co-hosts recently. Actually, he did something, and it was like, whoa, that's not good. The volume ain't great. Are you guys saying the volume's too low? Are you serious? Is the volume too low? And you're live on stream. You know what I mean? If you, you know what I mean, like you do something fucking. Cra it does feel a little bit low, doesn't it? I think it is low a little bit. Let me hold. Let me turn her up. All right. All right. How about now? Is it up? It should be a little bit better. Now Now I'm a little bit louder. Uh, so hyped for Conor McGregor fight week. Yeah, I mean, it's good to see McGregor back, I guess. I mean, he's really been tainted by everything that happened, but it'll be interesting to see him come back. And I'm just happy for the idea that, um, you know, it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a good thing to talk about. It's going to be a fun thing to talk about. I'm going to be live uh, talking about it on Saturday, I'm sure. But the only problem is, if I remember, these fights, a lot of times they go really close to corrupted. So we end up uh, kind of having to, I don't know, like kind of get in, like it's kind of interrupts corrupted a little bit, you know. But um, yeah, in a few minutes, I'm going to be uh, recording episode 200 of Morning Madness, my podcast, solo podcast. However, I am going to have Jake DeMarco show up for a little bit on it, so... Look for that little cookie treat of Jake DeMarco as he uh, joins me for a few on my Morning Madness podcast. So that'll be fun. But yeah, we can talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. Are the Patriots done? I mean, I never say done because... Super I don't know. Party. They always come back, it seems like. It's weird. Bray should have his opponent's head as his lantern. Oh my god. Well, I mean... Oh, like every time they make a new head? Deftones 22. What up, Deftones? That is an interesting idea. Um, like, every single time, like, he comes out to, to, like, maybe, like, a major match. I'd say that that'd be cool if it was a major match. Like, if it was a, uh, like, four four times a year or two times a year for big matches, he his opponent's head is his lantern. That'd be kind of cool. Although, I would think that maybe he would do it after he beats them. You know, that they would turn the head into the latest opponent. That could be done, too. But that's a, that is a lot of work and whatever, and they can't even seemingly get these things right. So, you know, with that being said, it's hard to sort of say. Uh, but Deftones, man, Deftones, thank you for the super chat, dude. Super chat. Super chat. What are your thoughts about Robert Roode return? Um, good. I mean, the guy, uh, Robert Roode should really have been pushed as this super serious business-like heel. Unfortunately, one of Robert Root's problems, that I've been thinking about this recently, and the glorious thing, unfortunately, as great as the glorious thing is, it's sort of a, it's always been kind of a babyface thing. And and it's, it's kind of a weird thing, like whether he's a heel or a face, being out there and going, glorious! Like, it's kind of like a silly thing. It's kind of like the librarian of AEW, what he should be doing. 
Like, so instead of the guy being like, I'm the librarian, like, that's super goofy. But something that could be pretty good that's goofy but still kind of cool is glorious. You know, glorious! You know, but as a heel, it's hard to take the, the dirty, dastardly, evil Robert Rude serious when even as a heel and he's beating down somebody, he's like, that, my friend, is glorious! Like, even that's a little weird. You know what I'm saying? So, like, he never fully can get there with that. So, as much as, like, God damn, the song is amazing, fucking glorious, like, and fucking it's great, and he's kind of a dick, and he's a prick, and all those things, it kind of only works for, like, a silly heel. Almost like, sort of like Jeff Jarrett, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's on that sort of Jeff Jarrett level of double J, Jeff Jarrett, burp, 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 burp. Like, like, that was a very, like... Like, Ric Flair, you can see as being the world champion heel, you know? Woo! Like, you see that. Jeff Jarrett, you know, double J, A-R, double, like, whatever, like, that just, that works as a top or a mid-card heel. And I think that that's kind of what Bobby Roode is working as, whether he's a face or a heel. Certainly as a face, the glorious thing. Then the glorious thing becomes really cheesy, like, you know what I mean? Like, glorious, like... And he does the whole thing with his arms. like, And it works out, but at the same time, it doesn't get you... It's not getting him further. And I think that that stinks because the glorious thing is so damn good. People would kill. Like, there's, like, lower mid-card and mid-card mid-card guys that would kill to be in the situation where they could come out and say glorious and have that music and things like that. They would kill for that. But, you know... Robert Roode or Bobby Roode or Robert Roode or whoever he is now. The thing about him is he could really be a top, top uh, heel uh, as far as a world champion heel or a top mid-card heel. And he's not really getting to those situ- those levels. You know, I don't think that his like ring work has been anything crazy special in the WWE and a- in-, in NXT as well. You know? I don't think he's done anything crazy special in the ring. He's just a very good, you know, veteran worker with that classic style. Um, By the way, we got a little new song uh, for WWE we're working on here. It's, uh, it's a nice little new song for WWE. It's coming out soon. I'm working on it. Check this out. Cause I'm dumb I'm only happy when the show's retarded In 93 is fucking when I started I'm only watching cause I'm dumb You know I love it when the rain is bad Why is Vince McMahon such a fag? Oh. I only watch it cause I'm dumb
I'm sorry. Uh, but that was fun. <clears throat> That's fucked up. I'm going to get sued by garbage. Uh, but yeah, the 200th episode of Morning Madness is coming to Patreon in a little while. So look for that. Uh, GCW better than uh, WWE. I'd agree. Whatever that, whatever fucking LCW is better than LSD is better than WWE. No doubt about it. Josh Grohl, what's up, bro? Uh, Machiavelli 420. These nuts are in the cage. <laughs> what are we talking about? Kevin Carter says Dave and one of you was an eye opener to the tragedy. Yeah, it really is. It's really a good interview. Definitely got to listen to that. Chris Van Fish Filet did a great interview with, uh, uh, Benoit's kid. It's pretty cool. I checked it out. It was good. Um, much appreciated. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, I could take calls. I could take a call. Vince hates box. <laughs> yeah, I did say that. Roman Reigns has been ambushed several times by Ziggler, Corbin, and now Robert Roode. Yeah, it's weird. It's like this. Everybody's attacking Corbin now. What up, Beersy? It's like everybody's attacking Corbin. I mean, Roman, rather. Everybody's attacking Roman. My bad. I think it's, you know, Vince, you know, just trying to keep Roman going in the mid with mid-card things. You know what I mean? Keep him going against guys that are going to be seen as heels on the mid-card that can help keep allowing, you know, the the people that really hate Roman won't boo him, really, because they don't care because he's in a mid-card story with these guys. So... You know, people kind of go, oh, okay, whatever. or And they'll even cheer for Roman sometimes, even people that don't like him really, because they'll be like, oh, yeah, I'll cheer for him because Ziggler sucks and whatever. You know, um, so it's kind of like a very smart booking decision by WWE what they do with Roman Reigns at this point because then all the Roman Reigns fans can still get Roman Reigns they want and then Roman can win all, you know, can have these, contro con not controversial, but have these, Situations where he's got to overcome something against some mid card, minor mid card situation, and then he does, and the fans will be happy, and it's a feel good moment for the casuals that the WWE has built these new casual fans that like Roman Reigns. So rather than abandon them completely, you know they're giving them the Roman Reigns they do want to see, um, because there's probably. I don't know. There's probably a million people watching WWE that like Roman Reigns. You know what I mean? If there's if there's like 2.3 million people watching WWE right now, it's probably, you know, I'd say probably like 30% 30, 30 of those people like hate Roman Reigns. Then I would say probably 20% of those people don't really care that much either way. But then I would say, you know, there's a good chunk, maybe 40% of the audience that, that like Roman, you know, within the last five to 10 months our our WWE fans for only the last maybe five maybe three to five years maybe three to five years you know what I'm saying like people who became wrestling fans around the time when the shield started or right before the shield started and so all they know is the shield and all they know is Roman Reigns and these things and so to them like that's all they want to see and they still want to see it much like people who liked Hulk Hogan back in the day still want to see Hulk Hogan uh you know around WrestleMania 6, 7, and 8 time, whereas some fans maybe were bored of that. You know what I'm saying? It's like the same sort of thing. So you're kind of you're making sure you, you only have a small group of fans right now. You know, you probably have a total of 3 million people watching WWE right now, in at least in the United States. Um, a total of about 3 million people who might watch, and on the regular, you're only drawing about 2.3 million of those people to watch your product at once. So, you know, and a, and, a, and about half of those people are people that started watching within the last 10 years, it seems. So there is a large need to appease um, those casuals to Roman Reigns, which I totally get as a business. You have to do it. I don't like them. I'm annoyed by it. But you got to do it. You know what I'm saying? You, you have to do it. Because if you don't do that, uh, I mean, you're going to lose that big chunk of that supporting audience. And you don't want to do that, you know? Uh, 
Rollins is such a great heel, a shitty baby face. Yeah, and see, I don't even, th I don't think that Rollins is a great heel. Like to me, Rollins isn't a great heel. To me, Rollins is, uh, uh, to me, Rollins is a bad baby face. Like as a face, Rollins is like a four out of ten. As a heel, I think Rollins is like a six point five out of ten. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want... The fact that Rollins is such a terrible babyface, I don't want that to allow me to give him a great rating for being a heel. But he works so great as this cartoonish heel. I'm going to kill him, John. What's in the box? What's in there? Open it up. Open it up. I'm Seth freaking Rollins. Open it up. Oh, my God. I am the Monday Night Messiah. Like, that shit is hilarious. Like, that, to me, is so cartoony stupid. And by the way, it's really just Vince McMahon. I mean, Vince McMahon is just being like, I want you to be me. You're like, if, like, you're, like, he's, like, that's Vince's line. We need to come up with a new moniker. There's no more Burn It Down and Seth Rollins and Seth freaking Rollins. You know, now you're a heel. We need something else. You need, you need, you talk about how you're going to, how you're going to make Monday Night Raw better. How, you know, you're, all you care about is making things better and the people don't care about it. That's what you're going to do. And we're going to make you the savior of Monday Night. But Jericho kind of did that too. Like, you're, a, you're, not a, you're not a savior. Seth, you're going to be the savior of Monday Night Raw. But you're not just a savior. You're a... You're a... You're a messiah. You're the Monday Night Messiah. Like, that's exactly Vince. That is 100% exactly how I see that going down in the back. That is Vince McMahon. You know, Seth, you're not just, um, you're not just a savior of Monday Night Raw. You know, you're, all, you're also something else. Uh, you're something more. You're something more than a savior. Vince. Seth, you're not just a savior. Uh, you're a damn messiah. You're... Uh, the Monday Night Messiah. Like, that is 100% Vince McMahon. Like, there is no, no question whatsoever that that's not Vince McMahon. It is Vince McMahon. You are, Seth Rollins, the Monday Night Messiah. Without a doubt. And I am taking calls. Let me pull up the phones real quick. I got to sign into my other Skype. We got a few minutes here to pull up some phone calls, and then I'm gonna go record Morning Madness, episode two fucking hundred on the Patreon. Three hundred and eighty-seven patrons right now are wet, willing, and erect on my Patreon for the podcast. Two hundred episodes of Morning Madness, and I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna give it to you long, deep, and hard. Oh, man, this is, I got to sign into my Skype. I got to sign into my Skype. This will just take a second. Typing with one hand's a pain in the pump. What up? Let me get the phone number up here. You guys can add me on Skype, and I'll add you back. Uh, Danny Deadly, D-A-N-N-Y, D-E-A-D-L-Y, just like you would think. Um, I'd say about you know 15 minutes left of the show if or something like that, so get it in, man. If you want to donate, the donations are all on, of course, for this uh, Anything Goes Hangout. We'll talk about what the fuck ever you want. doesn't matter what it is. It's on the line. It's on the table. Your wife's on the table. Yo, 908, hello. 908, right away gets in. What's up, 908? Hello? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, you know, uh, Joe, I had uh, I had this epiphany. I think, you know, the um, Monday Night Messiah, Yeah. you know, Dick, I think comes from uh, the Netflix show that, uh, you know, that Seth Rollins is uh, watching. I don't know if you were familiar with, um, you know, the show on Netflix. What's it called? Uh, the, the Messiah on Netflix. Oh, really? And he's watching that show? You know, uh, Joe, 
Yeah, you know, I think I think there's uh, I think you need to look into that show. There could be a correlation with his uh, character hmm. and his, um, you know, and the show, you know, as as an inspiration. Wow, that is a huge, um, that is a huge thing right there. I had no idea. And I'll, I, what I'll say is, if Vince really didn't come up with that, and it was Seth that came up with that. The minute that Seth Rollins pitched to Vince, like the Monday Night Messiah, Vince would love that. Vince would love that anyway. So, but I really thought Vince would have come up with it. But uh, yeah, Messiah on Netflix official uh, trailer one. It's like a is it a Jesus story? Holy shit! You're not joking. Wow, it could be. It could be. Could be unrelated. But what do you mean? He just disappears. Wow. And what is that for? Oh, it's like a current story. Wow, this is really weird. All right, well, there you go. That could be true. That could be true on Netflix. That could be true. That's a great call. <laughs> and now let's welcome in. Uh, I believe it is on the on the line right now is Luke Rojas. It is. What's going on, Joe? What's up, Luke? Dude, I never get the chance to talk to you about how horrible the Patriots were this year, but you know what? I'm actually kind of glad that they lost to the Titans in a way, because now I don't have because now I don't have to worry about hearing how bad they are by everybody. Now at least that they're out of the, uh, you know, they're out of the playoffs, now I can be like, okay well at least, like, they're, they're a normal team again, it feels like. It's not like they have this huge pressure of being, like, the greatest team of all time again. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, well, but, you know, the only thing that drives me, like, that makes me laugh a little bit, it doesn't drive me crazy, but it, like, it, may, it makes me laugh, is, like, dude, like, every year it's the same thing. Like, I don't think, I, I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to, like, tell the people out there, uh, Luke Rojas, and I love you, by the way, Luke Rojas, you dirty little fucker. Uh, I, I'll let you go, though, because uh, I'm up against the time here, but I do, I'm glad you got that in there. One of the things is, as a Patriots fan um, of uh, 30 years, I mean, I'm 35, but I didn't really notice football until I was like five or six years old. So like 1991 or 1990. And then I, I although I, I still have my dad's Super Bowl tape from 1986 when the Patriots lost to the Bears. Uh, the Patriots have always been a joke up until 2001. And I think one of the things that you have to understand about me as a Patriots fan is you know in, in 2000 you know 3 or whatever it was you know people after that they were like wow when the patriots lost in 2005 or whatever it was you know they, they were like ah oh, the dynasty is over patriots are done then in 2006 it was the patriots were done you know and then the patriots made it to the super bowl again against the giants and then they lost and then people were like ah oh, they're done ah oh, that's funny like look at that you didn't even win you know and then they lost again and it was like, that's it, it's over, man. You guys, you're fucking done. You know, so it's just like you constantly hear that you're done, and then you win another Super Bowl. Like, oh, 2001 was a fluke, you got lucky, and then they win Super Bowl in 2003. Oh, you got lucky, the defense was really good, it wasn't Brady. Then 2004, you know, and then 2005, 6, you're done, and then, and then you're done, you're done, you're done. Then you win again, you win the Super Bowl again, and then... You know, after that, there's the, oh, they cheated and they done, they're always done. So there's always, like, this, like, chip of, like, oh, you know, invalidation of your winning. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's never been more of that than in football. Football is the worst for that. Of Like, like even, even other teams hating other teams. You know what I'm saying? Like, every team hating on every other team. It's like, why do you discredit other people's teams? It's like, listen, I don't like the Steelers. Obviously, like, they're my hatred. Like, I hate, they're, like, in my top five hated teams. But the Steelers are fucking awesome. They're one of the most legendary, like, they are football. Like, the, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers are the shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, when people win, it's like, you gotta give, you can't always just be crying about everything, about everybody. You know what I mean? If you're a fan of, if you hate the Dolphins and they won a Super Bowl, which they won't, <laughs> but you hate the Dolphins and you're a Carolina Panthers fan, 
It's like you're going to invalidate the, the, the Dolphins Super Bowls because you don't like them or whatever. I've seen it every year with every Super Bowl winner, no matter who wins the Super Bowl. Like somebody out, people out there are like, oh, they only won, blah, 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 blah. I don't know why, but football fans are the only ones that do that. It's like, are you kidding? Like football teams win one Super Bowl and people are like, oh, yeah, you won one, whatever. And it's true, but because those same fans that won one flip out about the Patriots being lucky or something. It's like, what are you talking about? So, like, dude, my hatred for football fans is so immense. Like, I can't stand football fans. Like, actual football fans. I know that you're like, well, aren't you a football fan? And it's like, yeah, I, I'm I'm a football fan, kind of, I guess. Like, I've always watched football, and I like it, but I love hockey. I, I, I love hockey. Hockey is my sport. And I'm going to talk about the Bruins and Blue Jackets tonight later up on Morning Madness 200 probably. Just for a second, not too long because nobody wants to talk about sports. But you know what I mean? I just don't like the football fans' attitude. They're all just kind of stupid. You know what I mean? Because other than the Steelers, nobody else has won that many Super Bowls. You know what I mean? So any shit talk about stupid shit is just annoying. You can see it in baseball though, right? Like you can understand in baseball why people hate the Yankees. Why people hate the Red Sox sometimes. Why people hate the, the Dodgers. You can understand the insane hatred. You can see why Boston fans say Yankees suck. The reason why Boston's fan, Boston fans would say Yankees suck is many things. Because, you know, not only did they take one of our best players back in the day in the early 1900s, one of the best players of all time, but they have the largest payroll in baseball. And so they're like your bigger brother or whatever. So you have a complex. So you understand that there's a complex. There's a pay scale of salary that's different amongst teams. Like the Yankees are the top, you know, team as far as payroll usually. So you can see why people hate them for, for more than just the wins, right? Because obviously, if you were to say, like, who's the greatest baseball team of all time? Like, yeah, pro you're going to say Yankees. They have the most World Series championships. They're legendary. The logo is known throughout the world. Why would you try to take that away? You wouldn't take that away. If you want to say, you know, Yankees, I hate the Yankees for the, those reasons, I get that. That's fine. But we're not going to invalidate shit. But they do have a salary cap that's different than other teams. It's pretty fucking crazy. Um, we're, but in football, it's not really like that. It's a little bit different. So why the football fans are just so mongoloidish I don't know. But the uh, the football fans, for some reason, are like super mongoloids. I don't know what it is. Everybody talks shit in sports, no doubt about it, but some people are just weird. What up, Andre Corbeil? What's up, Andre? Uh, yeah, you got to listen to the uh, uh, Chris Van Fish Filet interview with uh, David Benoit. is really good. Definitely listen to that. Did I ever like CM Punk? Yeah, I kind of liked him. You know one of my favorite things that CM Punk ever did? We've talked about this on the show before. Do you guys remember when he was in the Straight Edge Society? The best thing I've ever seen, and I recommend that you guys go watch this later. First of all, I recommend that you become a patron of mine so you can hear Morning Madness later on, and also that you can hear Corrupted Podcast on the weekends. You want to listen to my Corrupted Podcast. The last episode, episode 134... And episode 133 were really, really good shows, I thought. And I'm happy with the new crew. Uh, we've messed around with some different uh, people here or there, and I'm really happy with uh, me, JB, D-Moon, and, and Leah. And um, I was actually happy when Dummy was on, too. So hopefully we'll do more things with Dummy on a different show where he'll be like the backup for Moon or somebody. But been great. But yeah, CM Punk, when he was in the Straight Edge Society, that was one of the best things in the Royal Rumble. Does everybody remember CM Punk in the Royal Rumble? He had the long hair and the beard. It was so funny because I think he was like the first person in the Rumble or something like that. And when people were coming to the ring, CM Punk had the microphone. So throughout the Royal Rumble, he was asking people to pledge themselves to the Straight Edge Society. And it was so funny. Somebody came in the ring and he was like, let me ask you something. Hold on a second. Would you pledge yourself to the Straight Edge Society? Pledge yourself to me or whatever, like blah, blah, blah. And then it was, he kept doing it like where he was asking people to pledge, and it was really funny. And then the funniest thing was, like, when, when like, the third or fourth person came in and he went to ask them to pledge themselves, he didn't even say it. Instead, he attacked them with the microphone, and it's the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen because he goes... 
every time someone came in the room, hey, would you pledge yourself? You can pledge yourself to the Straight Edge Society. I can save you. You could be with us. You could be in the Straight Edge Society. And I could, like, and he goes in his whole thing with everybody. And then, like, the third or fourth one comes in the ring and he goes, let me ask you something. Would you? And then he stops and he just goes, <laughs> and he hits him in the head with the microphone and then fucking, like, throws them out of the ring or whatever. Dude, it's so fucking funny, dude. It is the funniest fucking thing. One of the funniest things I've ever seen in the Rumble. Let me ask you something. Would you? Oh, <laughs> it's so fucking great. Holy shit, dude. That was funny. I was watching the. I was watching that live, and I remember sitting at home, and, um, you know, I was like, what, is he going to do this the whole fucking rumble? What is this? And when he fucking, on like the third or fourth time, rather than actually ask the person, he just assaults him with the mic as he begins to start asking them. That is some of the most comedic shit like that I've that I've seen in WWE in a while that was that worked. It was so fucking funny. That shit was hilarious. And I don't know where it is, but it is funny, man. It is some of the funniest shit. Um if it's the Rumble two thousand ten, I saw someone say it might be the Rumble two thousand ten. If it's the Rumble two thousand ten, um then you nailed it. It was good stuff. I think people start need to obviously by now you would think you'd come to terms with the fact that uh, you're never going to get that CM Punk again. It's not going to happen. He's not going to come back. Really, it's never going to happen. Now, you know what I mean. I think when I started my show, CM Punk was just leaving in the first year and a half to two years of the Joe Cronin show. I think it was uh, he. When did he leave? 2014, maybe. Uh. It's like 2020 now. That was like six or seven years ago when he when he left, and we and we never from that moment on always would talk. <laughs> Was he coming back? Is he coming back? Is he coming back? It's just unbelievable to me that we still talk about that. But yeah, that CM Punk shit was crazy. Anyway, everybody, thank you uh, for listening to this uh, random anything goes stream. I uh, have to tell you that we have a we have a uh, we have we have the before we go though. Do you remember what I said to you guys last night on the Monday Night Raw review? The ratings are in, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, the ratings are in. Last night I told you this would be the lowest rated episode of 2020, which was dumb because there's only been a couple episodes. But I said that it would fall uh, around or below 2.1. 2,100,000 is what I said last night. What else we got? And we oh, have the numbers, folks. A little bit of the bubbly. That's it. A little bit of the bubbly. bubbly. Look at this stuff. Oh, oh. Yo. A little bit of the bubbly. That's it. <laughs> Cho, I want butt fuck you in front of a mirror so I can state into your eyes as I rape your ass. Oh, wow. What? No, I'm just kidding. What's up, Casey? Is raw. Yeah, rape me all day, baby. Rape me up. Rape me till I'm dead. Um, <laughs> Casey is the most raw. Casey is raw. I love you. You, you got to do it to me, raw. Do it to me, raw. Um. Okay, so anyway, we have last night's episode rating. There it is, courtesy of WrestlingInc.com. Courtesy of WrestlingInc.com, January 6, 2.3 million. Uh, and there it is, 2 million. They almost went under 2 million last night. I'm actually surprised that maybe, I thought maybe it would get as bad as 1, 1,900,000, something like that. Uh, but they came close. But I, I did say, I think 2.2,200,000 or 2,100,000. Yesterday on my Raw review, I said this will be a very low rating. I mean, a lot of people said that, though. I mean, knowing that the college football game was happening. But I knew that rating was going to be low because I had 1,200 people watching my Raw review the week before. 1,200 people watching me live on the Raw review the week before. So it makes sense that last night almost you know, 350,000 less people were watching um, Monday Night Raw. So that makes sense that those people in those 350,000 there was probably those 300 people that were missing from my stream last night. 
So that that's what it, that's what it was. And then some of those people came in really late. So some of the people who were watching eventually tuned out over the hour. And then our my ratings went up. My ratings went from 700 and 600, then up to 800 again. And I think that was the people who got done watching the college football game coming back to me to see what I was saying about Raw since they really didn't watch. And then many of the people that have already heard me talking about Raw for the last hour were going off to bed. So it was very interesting to watch those numbers happen. And that's clearly where those numbers landed. So there you have it. There's the Raw ratings, a very low episode. Um, WrestlingInc.com has some stuff here from Mark Middleton saying uh, that Monday Night Raw's episode featuring the first ever fist fight, um, uh, this is down 15% from last week. We saw that. I saw that as well. Um, the first hour drew 2.2. The uh, last week's hour did 2.5. The second hour drew 2 million. And um, our number, the final hour, final uh, third hour did 1.8. Yikes. This is the third lowest hour viewership of all time. Wait a minute. This is the third lowest third hour viewership of all time, including the holidays. So, yeah, this was the third lowest third hour of all time. Wow. That is... Super Jack. Super Jack. That's crazy. Would be weird if I sterilize as I rape you. It would be weird. I, I will say that. Uh, Casey is raw. That is uh, strange. That does sound bizarre. That is quite uh, a weird thing that you just said. Uh, but, you know, I doubt that... I doubt that... I don't think I'd like it. I don't think I'd enjoy that. I don't think that's something that I would enjoy. Would you enjoy the Monday Night Messiah? Yo, Jake DeMarco, if you're listening, man, maybe we can just, uh, you can join me now. We can do our uh, podcast, start it live, and then end the live stream and get into Morning Madness. I got a lot to talk about on Patreon, and I'm going to do it, baby. You want you want it? I'm going to give the people what, what you want. Let me just see what Jake's up to. I'm going to give the people what they want, and it's cock. It's cock. Um, that is not a real, a real Dave Rose. That's a fake Rose, I believe. Um, if it was real, I w I wouldn't ban you if it was if it was really you. But that's not you. That's a fake one. Uh, Punk always just seems slow and awkward in the ring to me. Yeah, Luke Rojas. I'm not the biggest fan of Punk in the ring. You know what I mean? I don't really think that CM Punk did that much in the ring that I liked. It was his presence and his character and his uh, mic work and stuff and his music and everything that got you fired up, he, all, all that stuff. So I think that CM Punk, uh, Plunk? CM Punk um, was was great, but I, I mean, I'm never, I never go, Super oh, I got to watch that Super match Jay. again, really. That's how I roll, Joe. I rape your ass and fill you. Hmm. Wow. That is, uh, that's terrifying. I'll just, Shit bomb! I'm just going to be honest. HO, I seem to be blocked in your chat. What up, Shell? What do you mean, Shell? You got blocked in the chat? Why? Are you serious? What the fuck? Aren't you a mod? Uh, thank you for becoming a $5 shit bomb. Is that really you? That doesn't make sense. In the morning, you get wet. I can't believe you're wet. Uh, is that really... Let me just see. Hold on a second. Let me find out what's going on. Are you serious? Yeah, that's really her. What the fuck? Why would she be blocked? That's really her. But she's a mod. That doesn't make sense at all. What? Uh, guys, if you want to hear what I'm going to talk about on Patreon, Morning Madness, uh, make sure you become a patron. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. I'm going to be doing my 200th episode, guys. Come party with me on that podcast. I mean, it's a podcast, but, uh, you know. 
Um, hold on a second. Super chat. Send me your uh, link. Chat. I'm so horny, Joe. Me Kay. so horny. Ooh. Let me rape you. Give me that wetness. Thank you very much for the donation. This is really creepy how horny Casey is raw is. Uh, yeah, send me the link to your actual YouTube channel because I have so many, you know, obviously so many people over the years have had to be uh, taken out that uh, it's hard to sift through everybody and find everybody. That is weird. That's really weird. No notification, JP? Yeah. Well, I'm going to hang out a little bit longer because Jake DeMarco already ha had to leave to go out anyway, so I can't really record with him until a little bit afterwards. And then uh, I'll have Jake on at the uh, latter half of my Morning Madness podcast. Um, what up, villain? How you doing, man? I don't... It wasn't going to be live. It was going to be... It's going to be recorded, so... Um, yeah, what is this? What the fuck? Let me fix this. Um, what in the fuck? Yo. What's up, Troy? How you doing, man? Are you going? Yeah, I'm not going live, I don't think. I think I'm going to. Uh... Yeah, I think Casey needs to whack it. Casey, you should see the picture I have of Alexa Bliss that somebody sent me. Because it is wild. It is wild. I mean, you talk about Tessa Blanchard. Between her pooping audio and, and uh, Alexa Bliss's photo that I got, I mean, this is like a smorgasbord of just mayhem. Let me tell you that. Rando, what up, Rando? How you doing, man? <clears throat> I, I see that uh, Michael probably didn't do it. He probably wanted it to be, but he didn't. he didn't go there, you know? He ended up leaving. He wanted to be there, but it, but he passed out or whatever. I'm a fucking idiot. All right, Drew, settle down. If you got a dick, I'll follow you. All right. Follow me all the way home. Follow me all the way home. Follow me all the way home. Super Jack. Super Jack. I'm going to blitz your ass. Blitz it good. Sorry, I'm back. Oh my god, dude, that was weird. No, I'm loving it. You know what, Casey? I'm down with it. I'm actually down with it, dude. You know what? I would take I would take all of your video games off your wall in your bookshelves, and I would uh, I would sodomize you with all your own video games. All right. I will run them across your body, like they're uh, like they are toys, like adult toys. 
I'll run your video games around your body like they're adult toys. Do you understand that, Casey is Raw? Do you understand what I will do to you, Casey is Raw? Do you know how I will sodomize you, Casey is Raw? Do you know that I will take Ninja Gaiden 2 and I will stick it up your poop chute? Do you understand that? Casey is Raw, do you? I don't think you do. I am the Monday Night Messiah. Give it to me. Give it to me. I want to know who the fuck got rid of Shell. That's what I want to know. I didn't even know you could do that. Maybe I did it by accident. Maybe I, uh, because sometimes when you got to take people out, you hit the wrong button. Like, the names are scrolling so fast, you hit the wrong people. Maybe I, if I, maybe I took her out days ago. By accident. <laughs> what the fuck? I feel like if, if you make somebody a mod, like, you shouldn't be able to, like, just click them by accident. Like, I feel like that should totally not happen. Super chat. Super chat. Showing the dominant one and your submissive. I don't really like that, but I'll, I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you. Casey, I'll do it for you. I'll give you what you want. I'll give you what you want. Anyway, I got to go record Morning Madness in a minute. Yeah, so last night, so the other night, me and Leah were up. Uh, you guys kind of heard about how drunk I was. Me and Leah watched The Witcher and... Uh, we left, we left the wine bottles in the basement. So there was only like this much left of the wine that was, by the way, the most horrific wine I've ever had, champagne or whatever. Leah had Merlot. So both wine bottles were sitting on the kids, like, the you know, the kids' little table. We actually use one of the kids' little picnic table things that they don't really use anymore. We use that as like a mini table, like in front of the couch, in front of the projector screen. And so, you know, we were hammered. You know what I mean? I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. So we just left everything. We left everything on that table. And, you know, when I got up to go to bed, she did, got up to, it was like, you know, between 2 and 4 a.m. When, when we both were left the basement and we left those wine bottles there. And uh, the other day, the day after, the kids are playing in the basement. And I guess they knocked over, one of them knocked over the... Uh, the wine, the uh, champagne bottle, the Corbell bottle or whatever you call it. And uh, it fucking splattered into the receiver. And I was like, oh, my God. Fucking no. And uh, I heard it. And it was uh, like the kids was so freaked out. You know what I mean? They were they were so creeped out. Um. They they thought I was like, oh my god, dad's gonna kill us. We just spilt this on this uh, on the receiver. Oh my god, we spilt this shit. And I was like, no, I'm not mad at you because we're the. I left it here. You know, what I mean, I left it on the on the table. So, I mean, I was like, come on, be careful what you're doing. But they were like, oh my god, you know, I spilt it. And uh, you know, I I dumped the receiver on its back and I unplugged everything and it seems to be okay. All the stuff I opened the lid up and I wiped it off the electrical and everything. It looked like it didn't really, it looked like somehow the wine didn't spill inside of it. It spilled on the outside of it. So, and it wasn't much left anyway, cause it was like this much left. And when it hit the ground and only splattered, it didn't like fall into it completely. So it was, you know, it was Gavin and Brenna that did it. So, but they were like, Oh shit. And I'm like, well, it's, you know, daddy shouldn't have left the fucking wine sitting on the table, you know? <laughs> cause like we woke up, they got home from school. We woke up. They got home from school, and we were all downstairs playing, and we were playing ball. You know, what I mean, we we're playing with a ball. The kids are right there, and I'm kicking the ball, and we're all downstairs playing. And over there on the table is still the wine bottles on the table, and we're all playing. You know, kicking the ball around. So then I started cleaning up stuff in the basement, and I started cleaning because I was going to clean the whole basement again. And so I'm cleaning up everything, and while I was cleaning, like they're kicking the ball behind me. And they kicked it over and spilt it. And they were like, oh, my God. And I'm like, no, that's exactly why I'm cleaning up. But 
that should have been cleaned up last night, so it wasn't your fault. Uh, but it was just funny because I was like, oh, that receiver is definitely going to be dead. The receiver is definitely broken. And then it wasn't. Let's take phone calls. Hey, what up? How you doing? It's Jay Hood. What up, man? How's everything? What's going on, man? Hey, how you doing, man? How's everything, man? What's You're up, You're a good Hood? guy, man. I, I saw you. This is Jay Hood, man. I know you was crying because your Patriots lost. Oh. I remember that day, you know, I'm a Tennessee fan. Big, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm a big Tennessee fan. I really I don't yeah, believe so, that. I don't believe that you're a Tennessee I, fan. No what? Yeah, I am a I am but a, aren't you a, a in Tennessee New, fan. You're in New York. You're in New York. Yeah, I'm in New York, but yeah, but listen to this. Listen to this. I'm gonna kill this shit right now. I'm only gonna I'm only gonna tell you one. All right? I'm only gonna tell you one. I can bat rattle you anytime. Oh it's my god! And, time. and I'm the best. What listen, the fuck? Boy. Oh my god, fuck you, Jay Hood! What the hell? Oh my god! Everyday jam! What in the world is going on right now?
What is going on right now? What the fuck is going on? Everyday Jam! Goddamn, Everyday Jam comes in with a drop out of nowhere! A bomb out of nowhere! Sorry, Jay Hood. Is he still here? Is Jay Hood still here? Hey, it's the old intro to the Joe Cronin Show. That was so weird. Dude, the old intro to the Joe Cronin Show just played. That was fucking bizarre. Yo, everyday jam, man. Thank you, dude. Seriously. Thanks, ma'am. That was nuts. That, I don't even know what I was doing, but that was fun. That was crazy. That was crazy, dude. What a bomb. Like, out of nowhere. Like, that that fired the fuck. Like, because I, I expected to come on here and do a little chill little thing, and then, all right, I'm going to see you guys later, and I'm going to go do Morning Madness. So when something like that comes in, that's fucking fire, bro. That is some fire shit. Do another song using Everyday Jam. I probably could. I don't know. That was hard to do because I don't normally scream anymore at all. So that was fucked up. But Whew. remember that video I used to play of me screaming in that high pitch, like Danny Filth thing, where I'm like, ah! like, and it was like, like I could never do that now. It'd blow my head would blow off. Um, I'm sorry. I, that went on way too long. I, I do apologize to some of the people in here who are like, what the fuck is Joe doing? But um. Yeah, my bad. Thank you. <laughs> um, we talked about the raw ratings earlier, which they're they're exactly basically what I thought they were. So I mean, I'm down with that. Yo, Jay Hood. I mean, Jay Hood. What happened, bro? Jay Hood wanted me to battle him, but he he had to leave. Uh, he probably got upset because I was screaming. Uh, Jay Hood, what's up, dude? Call back if you want. Te you were about to make a point about something, Jay Hood. If you want to call back, I'll put you back on again. I would love to have you back on so I can, you know, hear what you were going to tell me before that bomb went off. I mean, dude, normally I would pause the donation and just, I didn't know the donation was happening. I, I didn't, th I did not see that coming. That was crazy. So Jay Hood, call back, brother. I know you probably want to lay down a rap or you want to rap on me or, you know. All right, Jay Hood, what were you going to make a point about before somebody. Hey, the how you doing? How you doing, man? I know, man, you're a good guy, man. I have respect for you and everything, man. I love you. But I know you was crying last time over the Tennessee Titans. Uh, yeah, the yeah, Tennessee we heard Titans this part team. already. We heard this part already. You're a Titans fan. I don't oh. believe it because you're in New York. Okay, what else? Listen, I'm yeah. the man and rap battles. And you got to accept it. So I got a, I got, I got a new song. All right? All right? Ready? Okay. My niggas a bunch of stealing sturdies with them hollows. You do your stealings, my nigga. This ain't a movie, so watch your chillin' sour. Just keep me rolling, so fuck my feelings. Bullets like my niggas, we running, shooting, stealing. Fuck the opposition, they just all up in my business. Fuck the police, I cookin' working in this kitchen. My niggas a bunch of rashes. Yo, I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man, all right? Mm. I'm the man. All right. I, I know everybody in there. But I know you, 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 you can't beat me. You know, you can't beat me. And you got to bow down to the master because I am the master, Joe Cronin. And really? I run your show. And because people like me, people like me, they donate. Because people like me, mm, they give you, you donate. Yeah. But I want you, to, I want you to block me off the chat so I could donate to you. Because oh. I feel you that I want to donate to you. Did you get blocked? Yeah, I got blocked. Oh, for right. talking trash. Well, let me you know. Send me your YouTube and I'm link. The man. Send me your YouTube link. Why is what the All fuck right. is going on? What is going on with Shell? Yeah, send me. Um, uh huh. Send me. Yeah, send me. Uh, send me your link to your YouTube channel. Email it to me or tweet right. tweet it to me or something. Like you, you have to send me the link though to your channel because I can't find you otherwise. <clears throat> let me figure out what the fuck is going on, man. Are you serious, J Hood? Man, you're gonna bat rattle me. Yeah. Uh. What if the turkeys ate us? What if they filleted us? What if they killed us and ate our children? 
What if the turkeys ate us? What if they filleted us? If the turkeys ate us, if they had to hate us, the Thanksgiving was a little bit different. Instead, the turkeys ate us. They gobbled us apart. But first, they'd eat our nuts, and then they'd eat our butt. The turkeys ate us. What if? What if? What if the turkeys ate us? Instead of mashed potatoes, instead the turkeys ate us. It's an ice cream. Get the F out of here, Jay Hood. Get the F out of here, Jay fucking Hood. You want to bat rattle me? Yo, Jay Hood, why you always talk to me? Motherfucker, hope you motherfucking get HIV. I hope you die early life. Nothing, you will never survive. I hope you die, get raped by a black guy. Yeah, you say you're a Titans fan, but you're from Bronx, yo. Motherfucking try to understand. You deserve to be fucking eaten by rats. Your mother's fat. Your family sucks. You got no life. You got no wife. The only chance of having sex is to stare at two dykes. Yeah, you got no money, Jay Hood. That's why you call him a fucking show. Crying like you do, you dumb bitch. Yeah, get slapped in the face. I'm in the race that hate I have for this place. Jay Hood probably look like a cardboard box. You a homeless ass mark with no cock. Yeah, shut up. Call my show. Always say you wanna rap. Everything you do is trash. Everything you do is crap. Kiss my ass. Why you talking like that? Jay Hood, shut the fuck up and die. reason to die give you a reason to fly over the brooklyn bridge and hit splat in the night no one will cry no one will care the good thing no one has to throw money to funeral because nobody cares that jay hood is dead crackhead motherfucker he ends up in bed with a guy swallowing a load every night and everyone on the street scared of his thighs because they big fat round burly and shit hairy motherfucker choke on my spit Choke on my clit, choke on my dick, choke on. <laughs> Did I just say I have a clit? I think I just said I have a clit. <laughs> I got a clit, Jay Hood. Did you hear that? It's better than saying this, though. If you got a dick, I'll follow you. If you got a dick, I'll follow you. What up, Drew? If you got a dick, I'll follow you. I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> if you got a dick, I'll follow you. If you got a dick, Drew will follow you. If you got a dick and it's really thick, then Drew will probably swallow it all until it makes him all sick. If you got a dick, I'll follow you. <laughs> what is wrong with Drew, man? I love Drew. I love Drew to death. The poor bastard. I love him. I really do. <laughs> Remember when Jay Hood was like, yo, bat rattle me. Why don't you bat rattle me? You want to bat rattle me? You gotta give it up for Everyday Jam, dude. What in the world did Everyday Jam do today during this stream? This is wild. And welcome back, Shell. I don't know what the fuck happened. Joe Hood. <laughs> Someone said Joe Hood. <laughs> Truth look. Dude, Joe Hood. That's funny as fuck. Joe Hood. Joe Hood. That's pretty funny. <laughs> we got to get some fast stuff. Jay Hood, the next time you you called to, to rap battle me, Jay Hood. I mean, you you really need to bring it, dude. Cuz I'm not even a rap I'm not even a big rap fan. I mean, I am. I like rap, but I mean like I'm not even like a 
Like I'm a like I'm a I'm a I'm a fucking poser when it comes to rap. You know what I mean? And you know, you you, you know, you're probably listening to rap every day. You're probably listening to everything, every rap, e- every day, all the time. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, I I pretty much don't really listen to rap other than like Eminem, Tupac, you know, Dr. Dre, you know, like maybe a couple others that we all know, you know, but like nothing crazy. Like I'm not that, you know, I mean, I mean, shit, dude. Doom. I listen to Doom in New York. Good old MF Doom in New York. Uh, But yeah, they're pretty much other than, you know, there's like 10 DMX, you know, that's about it. I'm not really a good, knowledgeable person on rap, nor do I ever think I would be anything like that. But you call to rap battle me or bat rattle me, as you say. And Jay Hood, man, Super you Jay. listen to this every Super day, Jay. man. Jay Hood, you just got served. And I don't even know anything about you either. That's the thing is I really don't know much about you to say about you. You know what I mean? Like I have all this stuff. T Rev, thank you. T Rev twenty four X, thank you, bro. Like I have nothing really to say about you. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, because nobody knows who the fuck you are. Like, but you've got a glossary on me. There's so much shit you could say about me. You're watching me every day. I'm telling you my personal things, things that go on in my life. If you're listening to my Patreon, Jesus Christ, there's a fucking, like, onslaught of personal shit and things that, embarrassing stories, things that have happened to me, things that I'm not good at, like, the, the things that I've done on the air and all these different things. You could just fucking slaughter me with, like, tons of shit that you know about me. But I, but the problem is, the only thing I can think about you is, like, like dude in his house masturbating in front of his mother because there's nowhere else to go. You know what I mean? That's, like, all I can think about with you. So it's, like, weird. But So you would you think you would have the advantage, but but you're not, you're not taking the advantage you have. But that being said, uh, Jay Hood, I will unblock you. I will. I will unblock you because you're harmless and I like you. All right. I do like you in a way. There's something about you. There's something about you. Jay Hood. What up, Jay Hood? Have you ever read that you were dead? I put the bullets in your head when you were laying in your bed and you were fulfilled with the dread and all the blood it just turned red and dripped right off the side on the sheets. Your motherfucker's been rotting for weeks and nobody care to look for you Because nobody cares for you and everything you ever did Piss everybody off that you knew In J-Hood now you got no life Now you in the grave You might as well behave Or I slap you again With a crypt to your head With a shot to your heart now you fucking the dead That was all just make believe But it's a promise believe you me If you keep it up I might just have to kill you with these Bullets through the chest like the rest I'm making you die or less I'll make you get arrested And molested by priests in New York They're sticking they pork Inside your anus like a cork And now you're dying for war I'm coming at you for sure I'm freestyling on you whore So come on, give me some more Your whole life is just a bore Your mother's Tupac Shakur Because she's dead on the floor I fucking put my finger in your mother Because I wanted to There's nothing she can do R.A.P.E. to you and her And there's nothing, find an excuse You're on the loose like a rabbit animal Retarded and shit and when I get all crazy, yo, you know I will spit I'm about to spit on your mom's private parts because that I can I'm gonna spit on your mom's private parts because I'm the man Anyone who 
wants to step up and get slashed by my katana blade Go ahead and get famous and then get slayed and then you dead ain't his maid Don't piss off Joe Cronin because I got something for you Yo, fuck you up like Joe Blonin, come on Trigger happy when I talk, trigger happy when I just walk When someone gives me a knock with look, I get them all shook They mad at me because I snap right back Right back, I fucking put a fucking lead in they ass. Fuck you, J Hood, you fuck. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with me? Thank you guys for listening. I went way longer than uh, we ever uh, intended to go. And Jay Hood, I'm sorry, bro, but uh, you just threatened to bat rattle me. You threatened to bat rattle me, so that just had to be done. I guess I don't know. I mean, I know nothing about you. What am I gonna say? But no, seriously, I'll unblock you, Jay Hood. Thanks to everybody in the chat um, for hanging out, especially during that through that weird fucking thing that I just did. And I apologize, Callum Keith. You like Jay Hood better than me? What the fuck is going on in this world? Did you hear his fucking freestyle? But anyway, uh, I'll see you guys on Patreon. Please check out Patreon. If you haven't done it, you will like it. You are missing out on hundreds of hours of podcasting and jokes and comedy and fucked up shit. Uh, it is not for the weak at heart. And pretty much most of the shit we say a lot of times is jokes. So hopefully you get them um, because that's the whole goal of, of most of the podcasts. Tennis Racket Jones is here, baby. What up, Tennis Racket? Uh, yeah, I'd go back and watch the stream. I thought the, st the stream ended up being pretty fucking good, man. And I even uh, screamed a bunch into the mic and then did that weird bat rattle on uh, Jay Hood. But everything else was fun. Paul, what up, dude? Kevin Carr, uh, Shell, Muhammad Abdel. What up, Muhammad? What up to everybody else? It's nighttime almost, man. What's up to Mike? Oh, you're in California. It's still afternoon for you. Uh, buenos tardes. Buenos noches. Buenos tardes. Whatever fucking part of the world you're on. It's all good, man. Love you guys. Thanks for listening. Hope you hit that like button. Get get it to 100 likes at least. Uh, check out my Patreon. It'd be much appreciated. Shout out to Tennis Racket Jones. Let's go on out with a Tennis Racket Jones song. Tennis Racket Jones. Thank you to Everyday Jam for dropping over $100 randomly. That was nuts, Everyday Jam. Thank you, dude. Really, 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 man. Um, and I really, really appreciate the fuck out of all you guys. Um... Thank you. All you dick riding fucks with your minuscule channels. All your huffing cronies fades like an army of camels. Sit and copy your shit. Make your own monetize this. You got 13 subscribers. Now you're starting to twitch. You got the same mic and setup. Stop riding this dick. You got the same Skype setup. Who you trying to kid? Get your own fucking gimmick. Intellectual property. You're trying to pass Joe like he's going Monopoly. You want me making 200 bucks. You're getting fucked by the long car and tennis racket Jones. Come fuck with me. You're taking your take and you never give it back. Sitting here. The same six women in the chat. I'll let you and ride and I'm Cronin's dick. Even though your own show is a bullshit. Yeah. It's about as real as a spray tan. Face looking like it's grazed by a rape fan. You dumb fucked up, cut butt, you suck butt, you cunt butt, you dumb fuck, and your mom's a slut. Huh? And while I'm at a fuck, you leech motherfucker. Hope these words leave you shitting in your sheets, motherfuckers. You are corny little bitches, this is beef, motherfucker. Watch me beat me, skeet, skeet, skeet on your mothers. I'm starting to think Joe Cronin should start charging admission for all the people that are riding on his dick these days. Fuck. Get your own ideas.